Hey, what's going on out there? It's Doug Cunnington here. And thanks for bearing with the little bit of a, uh, I wouldn't say technical issues, but I'm with my friend, Matt Javanisi. How's it going out there today? Uh, it's going. It's just going. I hear that. Nothing has stopped yet, I don't think. So, so uh, cheers, Matt. It is yeah. the middle of the day, but we do work for ourselves. So. We do. Uh, what are you drinking over there, friend? I'm drinking, um, I have two beers here next to me. I have an Outer Range Watercolors, which is an IPA, and I have an Outer Range Kicker, which is a Pills. Very cool. So you're so. You're, you're ready to go. I'm re- Yeah, I am very, very stocked up. Um, I've been drinking. Uh, I, I drink a lot as a person, uh, more so in the last month than I normally have. Indeed. Um, which has not killed my productivity because I just wake up hungover and just get on my computer <laughs> and just do what I have to do. And it's like it's comforting to, to, to basically know exactly what I have to do when I wake up, go to my computer, work on it, watch a little bit of Netflix, go to bed, rinse and repeat. Yeah. So, I mean, you described my sort of lifestyle yeah. as well. So I'm, I have a mirror pond pale ale from Deschutes out here. Oh, so yeah, nice. It's a good beer. It's a little foamy because I just hooked the kegerator up because we moved to a new home oh, you recently. Have a, you have a keg of it. I do. Yeah, we do. Nice. Yeah. So anyway, today we're talking about the Amazon associate um, commission rate change. And for people that don't know Matt, Matt is a badass. And you can see he's drinking beer in the middle of the day like a badass would. And <laughs> he's from moneylab.co. He's a co-host of Listen Money Matters. He has a website called Swim University. It's an affiliate site. It's been around for about 15 years, founded in 2006. Mm. In 2019, he made about $283,000, $283,000 from Amazon Associates, plus um, close to 90,000 in other revenue. So the gross rev was about $370,000. So congratulations for that, but- You recently got kicked in the nuts, unfortunately, with these Amazon commission rate changes. So it's going to cost you uh, quite a bit in estimated earnings. So I'm sorry about that. But I mean, this is a crazy time, right? Everyone's saying that. And I'm just curious from from your standpoint, like, how do you feel before we get into some of the nuts and bolts? Like, what did this do to your psyche? That day, so it was a Tuesday. I got the email. I oh, those emails uh, ever since 2017, when they initially uh, changed it from a variable fee structure, you know, basing basing like, because Swim University was sending so much traffic and so much uh, sales to Amazon that they're just giving me like an eight percent rate, a commission rate across the board. Um, they changed that to a fixed structure in 2017, and that killed uh, one of my businesses, Roasty Coffee, which I ended up selling. So it did not hurt Swim University because Swim University is in the outdoor and lawn and garden category on Amazon. And yeah, so uh, I always read those changes to their policy. They, when they come through and they always give me like a slight miniature panic attack. And this time when I opened up the email, I had a full blown panic attack and just drank myself to sleep. Just really just like not not lying, like just poured liquor and beer down my gullet until I was like, ah, everything's great. I'll fix I'll fix it tomorrow. And then that's when I like the next day I woke up because I was angry that day. So I was drinking and writing. And, just, and that's like it's great because it, it's, it's like a lubrication. You get the words out. But then you go back and you read you're like, oh, God. Uh, yeah. Let me clean up some of the language and uh, let me fix some stuff. And uh instead of complaining, make it more proactive. And um, so, yeah, it, uh, overall though, since that day, um, you know, I've been so heads down on another project that, um, and my team all kind of stepped up to the plate. There's, we have a very small team of about like three or four people and they all stepped up and we all figured it out together. And it was like, okay, we have a plan. You know, we're gonna, we're gonna see how this goes. Uh, it happened yesterday. I have not checked Amazon Associates today. I'm a little nervous to do that. Um, but I figured I'm not going to do anything drastic until May. I want to see how hard I'm really hit because I thought I, my business was over in 2017 when they had their first cut. 
and it wasn't. And I was like, okay, well, maybe the same applies here. I don't really know. So we'll see. I haven't looked. Um, but I'm, I've kind of like always been expecting this. This, is, this was bound to happen at some point. And my goal for the last like two years, has, ever since then really, has been to shift my revenue streams percentages wise away from affiliate marketing and more into digital products and my own stuff. And not that I wanted to like lower affiliate marketing revenue. I just wanted the percentage of my digital products to be like more like 60, 40 instead of like what it was. It was like 90, 10. And then I've been able to get it down to like 75, 25, 70, 30. And I was like, it's still not enough. So yeah. Um, and, and yeah, that's basically where I'm at. Cool. And I, I, I like what you said as far as like not, reacting right away. There's some things that you could do when algorithm changes pop out. A lot of times, some people are quick to act. And yeah. it's really good to be calm. And you've been doing this for a long time, Matt. Yeah. Like we said, this this site's been around for 15 years. You have a lot of traffic going to the site. And if you have traffic, you can adjust your revenue model. And we're gonna talk about a yeah. few of those items. So just for everyone, the sort of agenda for today's Matt and I are going to talk about beer throughout. I think that's a given. The other mm -hmm. part is we're going to talk about some of the options that, that Matt does have out there um, that he's looking at. I put mm -hmm. a several links in the description, so please check it out. It yeah. goes to moneylab.co. Matt wrote specifically about, about this change and you could, you know, get a little more detail on, you know, Matt in general and what he's looking to do. So we're going to, yeah. We're going to talk about options and, you know, kind of the business model. The the other thing, you know, when I was telling people that I, I was going to chat with you today, Matt, mm -hmm. you're an entrepreneur. You know, you started with affiliate marketing, like, like a lot of big, you know, prominent business folks yeah. these days. But you're an entrepreneur and you've been slowly diversifying. I think it's yeah. crazy to diversify at the very beginning because you're just spread too Got thin. It. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It sounds sexy, but really you kind of have to buckle down, learn your shit in one area, and then you could branch off and do some other stuff. So, I mean, you have a few different areas of business and for the people that don't know you at all, you just want to give like a 90 yeah. second intro and talk about some of your branches of what yeah. you got going on. Yeah, so, um, well, real quick, technically, uh, is there any feedback coming from my microphone? I just want to make sure because I have these speakers on with your voice coming through them. But I do have some pretty good noise gating on this, so I just wanted to make sure that I wasn't getting like double double dug. Okay, feedback. I think we're good think we're in good. Right. the just chat. Yeah, and everyone in the chat. This is live, by the way. Yeah. So for the people that are watching the recording, you know, you got to hop on these live streams because you can interact directly with yes. people like so, Matt. So yeah. So what, what's your story? Okay. So basically, I started Swim University, like you said, in 2006, a little bit earlier than that, because uh, I bought it in 2004 and then procrastinated for a couple of years and then finally launched it because I've been in the pool industry since I was 13. So just something like the, the pool industry chose me and then I chose website design because we needed a website for our, my, my band and we couldn't afford one, a designer. So I just learned. Um, and thank God I did that because that became my career, really. Um, didn't go to college, started Swim University, and Swim University is really just like everything I know about swimming pool and hot tub care, I just threw it on a website. And, um, you know, you can fast forward many years, 15 years, and it's pretty much the same. We, we were kind of like, I mean, a lot of the articles originally I wrote, they have all been rewritten now by another person, by a team. Uh, so my, my original tone still exists, but it's been sort of like uh, improved over time. Um, and all of the videos that are on there, I did. Um, and now um, Steph and I are doing with animations and stuff. So it's it's evolved, but not too much since it's a original. Like we've kind of had the same philosophy uh, on some university for 15 years, which is just like we are a website for pool and hot tub owners. Our goal is to make this not complicated because a lot of people on the internet can make uh, pool chemistry very complicated because it's chemistry and you just want to feel important as a person who understands things. So you just over, you know, you know, from the beer community, like we love talking high level and making each other look like we know what the hell we're talking about. So 
Uh, the same thing in the pool industry. Um, and so that swim university just takes that and goes, this is not hard. It's water. <laughs> let's, it, let's, here's, here's all you really need to know as a pool owner, because all you're really trying to do is get your pool clear and swimmable. You don't really need to understand the math and the science behind it, you know? So, uh, which is very different from my other sites, but that was, that's kind of been the philosophy. And it's always been about like educating and making education palatable. And I mean that by saying like, funny, try to be funny, you know? Um, and that's really been like the secret sauce of all the things that I've ever done is just twist the humor, just throw that little, like, you know, twist the humor in there. And it just makes my life a little bit easier because like I can write an article about pool algae and not want to kill myself. Uh, and then like, <laughs> it's just, it's just, I don't know. That little twist is just helps me to, you know, want to, want to, want to create Every Very day. Good. So, yeah. Yeah. And, it, um, and that was, yeah, that's from university ever. And since then I've created uh, a bunch of other websites, a bunch of other projects, but the main ones have been roasty coffee was the next project that I did, which I eventually sold. I sold in 2018. You can read all about that whole journey uh, on money lab. Then I created money lab, which was, which was me. It was, it was an answer because I was this guy who was in the like online business community. Like I had friends uh, and I, you know, I was a like, part of it, but I never felt like I belonged because I was always behind the scenes at Swim University. And I had to tell people like, oh, I'm that guy. I did that thing. And it was like, it was, so Money Lab was this way of like me having a personal brand without using my name. Cause my name is way too long and hard to understand and spell. And, and I was like, all right. And, I just wanted somewhere where I could talk about like this thing that I'm truly like is my, is an actual hobby of mine. It also is a career of mine. And so like I needed that outlet and that's what money lab what became. And then from there I've done a whole bunch of other projects on money lab, short ones, long ones, some as big as your head, you know, those sorts of things. So, uh, cool. Yeah. So, so brew cabin is another one, um, which is a home brewing website. All of these sites, by the way, during all this, uh, you know, quarantine situation have, have increased in traffic because people are using their pools and hot tubs way more. People are starting online businesses more than ever. And they're brewing again. Like people <laughs> like that, that hobby was on a downswing because there's so many breweries and you can get beer, good beer. Anywhere. So good. And it was like, right. And so, but now everyone's like, what else am I going to do? Bake bread, make beer, swim in my pool. It goes hand in hand, the beer and the yeah. bread too. So, yeah. And I think actually, I was just chatting with the person who introduced me to you, Matt, mm. um, back in when, whenever you started, um, like first couple of videos uh, for Money Lab yeah. and the blog. And uh, yeah, so that's been like years ago. And I didn't really know you that well, but then mm -hmm. we met around a brew kettle, started yeah. talking, and and you know here we are now. We we'd hang out if we could um, get near each other. <laughs> I know it's like every every week I have this thing that comes up in a sauna that's like email everybody about Friday co working, and I'm like nah, I can't this week. Nah, yeah, month. but I'm hoping for a while. in Colorado things start to get back to normal, maybe a little sooner than other parts of the country. I don't know. I hope so. I don't know. I hope, I hope so. So, I, so I'm not following the news. I'm literally like shut off from it. I have no idea what's going on. Yeah, I started to uh, taper back on that too because there was yeah. a lot of just regurgitation. So, a couple yeah. things. Um, in a second, Matt and I are going to talk about the options that he is going to, you know, or the things that he is going to do, yeah. the options that are out there in general for all of us to do. And I want to remind folks that uh, my friend Thais is out there in the chat. She's together to wherever in the chat. So thanks a lot to Thais. She's gathering questions or will be Q and A at the end. So we're going to go through a few of those items that, that Matt okay. talks about. So number one, you talk about some other affiliate programs and yeah, you want to just kind of lay it out for folks here. Yeah. A couple months ago I was emailed by Walmart and they were like, you know, do you want to try some affiliate links? And at the time I'm like, no, I don't because Amazon was fine. Amazon's trusted. Amazon's got a good API. It's, you know, it works with the software that I built. So I was like, I don't, this seems like a, 
just a waste, not a waste of my time, but just like, oh, just another thing I have to do when this thing's working so well. And I've always kind of been, as an affiliate marketer, I've been very, with, with Swing University, I've been very like hands off, meaning, you know, I put the links on my site that I want on my site. They really haven't changed. When they do change in Amazon, I do update them. I do like, if it's out of stock, I'll change it. But for the most part, they've been pretty solid. And it's been working and I haven't really done anything to improve it. And Walmart was like, hey, do you want to do something to improve it? Test a few things out. Um, I had a couple of other companies in the pool industry, like pool e-commerce sites that sell chemicals that reached out to me as well. I've had former relationships with those people as well. And I kind of blew them all off because, you know, not that I, it, I kept them in my back pocket. I signed up for their programs, but I was like, you know, I don't have time to sit down and change these affiliate links out and make and do these tests. Um, when, when Amazon is just, I know it's working, uh, that has changed obviously. And so, um, now, you know, re <laughs> it's like contact Walmart again and let's, let's get a conversation going. I've been in conversations with other affiliate, uh, partnerships who are offering much higher commission rates. Uh, and I've been working out special deals with those people and getting like, uh, you know, trying to get coupons from them specifically for some university customers. And, and, uh, and so with, with that, the idea there is to, I'm, I'm working on two things. One, I'm going to be working with, um, Jesse from genius link to do choice pages, to try that and see how that works out. Um, we haven't, formally like put anything together yet, but that's kind of the plan to see how that works out for some university, maybe do a couple of specific pages, see how it turns out. Also with my software, which is Lasso, we have the ability to put, to create display boxes, which is mostly what's on some universities. You see these like affiliate link displays and we have the ability to put two buttons in each display. Um, so one button, if you look at wire cutter, uh, for example, like wire cutter has, you know, if you have a pair of, uh, hiking boots, it's like, you can buy these on Amazon or you can buy them on REI and it's two different buttons you choose before you even click. So that is something we're going to try with some of these other, um, you know, smaller e-commerce stores and just see like, cause I'm looking at revenue. I'm looking to see how, first how bad this Amazon thing really is for me. And then if I can earn more with another affiliate program or at this point, probably multiple affiliate programs, you know, probably, you know, and, and, and paying closer attention to my affiliate inventory. So the way I look at affiliate marketing on some university and all my other sites is I look at it as if I run a store where I stock these products and it's a store like I'm a mom and pop. I'm just a guy who runs a tiny little pool op store operation. You come in, you ask for my expertise, I give you my expertise, and then I recommend you products. And I wanna make sure that my store is stocked with the products that I truly believe in and recommend. And I don't need a lot of them because a lot of the times it's the same product. It's like, hey, you got an algae problem, here are the things I recommend. And it's like that can appear on multiple pages of my website and kind of just looking at those a little bit closer, managing those a little bit tighter and, you know, making sure that they're actually converting. But, you know, with we, you know, with Lasso, we can do uh, Google Analytics click tracking. So we know that these display boxes are working or these text links are working in the right areas. And then I have to look at the individual programs to see if we're making any money from them. Right. So it's, it's, it's work. But um, this has kind of forced my hand, right? It's, it's made me, like, take what I was so passive. You know, affiliate marketing was such a passive income stream for me and now i'm like okay i need to take this like on swim university because money Lab's so different and even brew cabin's different like i take that very seriously swim university was just like this is working and, and the people who come to this website love amazon so you know yeah. what can i do um Get yeah again home. so that's kind of like what i'm looking at is just um taking uh more of a I guess a, um, a stronger hand in the affiliate marketing organization inventory and where we send people just, just being very intentional about that. Right. And I think, I mean, you highlight a couple of things that are really important. One, I was complacent too. I think that's what you're describing. You had yeah. 
so much free time that you were working on <laughs> Money Lab. You were starting new sites. You're working mm -hmm. on Lasso. You got yeah. a couple podcasts going on. I'm doing the same stuff, right? Like yeah. we set up our businesses and we were able to be complacent and we should have been improving content a little bit more. We should have been looking for, mm. hey, can we work with other affiliate programs that are maybe not going to convert as much, but maybe we can add them to the mix. And yeah. we were just s sitting and making money and it was nice. But you yeah. know, now we have to be entrepreneurs and figure out how to pivot and, and do some stuff. Now, um, Jesse Lakes from Genius Link described choice page, pages uh, for us last week, um, mm -hmm. just at a high level. Like wh what does it do and, and why do you like the choice pages? Um, it, it literally is what it is. It just gives you a choice on where you wanna buy from. So it, if you click a link and you, there's a uh, the same product as at Walmart or Amazon, it's gonna automatically create a page that will say, hey, where do you want to buy it from? This page, this site or that site? And you just kind of click it and see. And I think that's, uh, it's kind of like A-B testing where, you know, but you're giving, it's it's like A-B testing, but you're giving your visitors a choice on where they want to go. And if that choice kind of leans in one direction, well, then you have, you have a general idea on maybe what you should replace your affiliate links with. Uh, I, you know, I'm curious at, you know, when you say, you know, before we got on this call, you were like, we got kicked in the nuts. What happened to you? <laughs> I'm like, I, especially in the Amazon thing, because I don't, you know, I actually don't know um, some of your other sites. I just know your main one um, or I guess your the the public one. Um, what has happened on your end and what are you what are you feeling? So s similar to you, although I'm glad you asked, because usually I mean, I encourage people to uh, yeah. just ask me questions and then I'll deflect yeah. if needed. So I typically don't share my income just because sure. at some point, like yours, I mean, I'll be honest with you, you're making so much money that it's unrelatable. So people in our audiences are like, yeah, I'm just well, getting I'm started. I'm not making that, I gotta pay people. <laughs> yeah, I know, but uh, yeah, exactly. Right, I, I mean, you're, you're, I mean, it's like big numbers yeah. and people are like, well, yeah. that doesn't make sense. I mean, you're, uh, the amount that you are not gonna make this year is like, four times or five times more what I made out of college. And I, right. I made oh, good sure. money. So, so it's like, these are unrelatable yeah. numbers. So anyway, the point is, um, yes, it is a very big hit revenue wise because I'm a practitioner as well. I don't just have courses. I don't just talk about it. I, I do stuff. So it's a mm -hmm. big hit as well on par with what you're talking about. Even worse, the other part of my business is teaching people how to do Amazon affiliate marketing. So this again, forces right. me to pivot, but I'm sitting on, I was just waiting to do more courses and I was like, ah, eh, things are fine. I'm moving, I wanna go on vacation. Right. I'm doing this other stuff. And now I'm like, all right, I'm gonna bust yeah. out some courses. Yeah, now's the time. Yeah. I'm gonna, I wanna talk about the other stuff I'm doing because people are like, Doug, you're a one trick pony. It's a one note song. What else, are, what else can you do? But there's a few other things I could talk about, but everyone just, you know, really wants to hear me talk about keyword research and Amazon affiliate marketing. So I've just been, you know, droning on about that's it. What, yeah, I mean, that's what they want me to talk about. I just don't. <laughs> I'm so, so lit. Yeah. I'm like, I want to talk about Pinterest. I'm trying out Pinterest. I want to do Facebook ads. I want to do, uh, like, build software. I want to do SaaS. I want to make a rap album. <laughs> like, like, and it's, my, my friend calls them list burners because it's like just... I do whatever I want. And that's, but that was like the reason I started Money Lab was so that I could explore all those different, you know, I have a lot of interests, you know, I'm sure you, you know, it's like we have it, we have other interests, but for marketing purposes, it kind of like, if you, if you beat the same drum every single week, you get followers. Yep. Cause I can point to like, I can categorize you as a person. I know what you're all about. Yeah. And I'm like, yeah, it's, I'm kind of hard to pin down, but I like that. It just doesn't make for good marketing. The funny part is like we aligned. It's like affiliate marketers that brew beer. It's like that's a weird combo, and we're is both it? doing it. Well, I, I guess. Oh, you I mean don't... like? Oh, I thought you meant other people do that. Because I'm like, no, no, it's just me and you. Yeah, and yeah, then okay, we live yeah, down the street, yeah. so that's yeah. really and weird. That is, is it? But is it because? So I think like the living down the street part is like yeah. because Colorado's beer country, right? So yeah, yeah, right? yeah. So I, I mean, it's not affiliate marketing country. It wasn't. Remember, remember when Amazon wasn't. You couldn't uh, use Amazon Associates in Colorado. Oh, that's right. When I first that's moved right. here in 2015, no, you couldn't do it. So I had to keep my business in New Jersey 
And then like within a month when I after I moved here, they were like, yep, yeah, Colorado's <laughs> now. And I'm like, oh, my God, man. Oh, wow. And I moved my business. Gotcha. Interesting. Yeah. Now, um, yeah. like jumping back to the choice pages and having multiple affiliate yeah. buttons. So there's mm -hmm. some debate out there, some I guess it's heated debate. Some people are getting pretty upset about it, but Amazon states in yep. their terms of service yeah. that, you know, you're not supposed to put other affiliate offers in on the same page where you're using assets like an image. So obviously I think I know your stand, but what's your take on it? I mean, it spells it in black and white. And my friend, uh, Matt over at Amalinks Pro, he's like, hey, it states this, yeah. you gotta be safe. So what do you think? Well, he's the guy, he's the guy kind of like beating that drum, right? And um, I've gotten that email. After I did my Amazon article, I got that email so many times to the point where I was just like, but wire cutter does it. And that was the end of my rant because I'm like, why can they do it? Yeah. Well, is it New York Times, is it what, what, you know, why? And are they using different images? Like, that's fine. Like, I can, I can make, I can take my own images. Yeah. I, I'll buy something on Amazon, take a picture of it, put it up on my, you know, I don't mind. Um, and I'm going to interrupt you. So as devil's advocate, so let's say, yes. I mean, it's it's the wire cutter, right? It's New York Times. They have their own rules, I suspect. This, by the way, this whole video, Matt and I are not associated with Amazon. This is for your pure entertainment purposes, consult your own lawyer, blah, blah, blah. But sure. um, I'm pretty sure big companies have their own affiliate manager, account manager, and perhaps different rules to play by. So what would you say to that? Unfair. Unfair. <laughs> Okay. I would, I would, I would, I would, I would just say that. I mean, I, there's nothing, look, I have to change. I have to adapt. Yep. Um, you know, and if it means that Amazon takes me off their program, okay. I have, I hopefully have two other alternative places to link to. The, the thing is, is like Amazon is not the only, um, it's not the only affiliate program in town. Yes. It's the biggest. Yes. It's the most trustworthy, but now it's not the best. It hasn't been the best for a while. And I would argue that like, yeah, it used to be very passive. You know, you throw something like, and I assume this is the way it works. I don't really use it, but like something like skim links where it just like auto links all your shit for you. Um, can't do that anymore. You gotta be more intentional. And I think like, this is just a turning point for bad affiliate marketers to turn into good affiliate marketers. And good affiliate marketers give a shit. They, they, treat their recommendations like gold and they should because you know i'm not going to recommend i mean i'm a pretty bad i mean as far as affiliate marketing goes like i'm a bad affiliate marketer in the sense that like i don't like i will refuse to put stuff on my website that i don't like you know how many you know how many people <laughs> reached you out <laughs> yeah okay <laughs> do you know how many people reached out to me and, and were like hey now that amazon's kind of screwing everybody like you should join our affiliate program i'm like i don't know who you are i'm not gonna i've never used your product before or or i'm like i don't like your product i would never do that but how many people that you know in our space promote bluehost as an it's it's not good like it's not a good hosting company i've used it i used hostgator they're all the same people i i'm gonna promote something that's a harder sell I use WP Engine personally. I dig it. Is it the best? I don't know. But right now, it's it's working for me, um, and I recommend it because that's what I'm using. And I that's it's a harder sell. It's really because it's like thirty five dollars a month instead of a dollar a month. And but my pay my commission rate's the same. It's it's like two hundred bucks if I get somebody to convert, which is nice. I don't get many people converting, but because it's like it's a high priced product, and you kind of have to be at a certain level to you know, switch to something like that. But yeah, that makes, I think that makes me a bad affiliate marketer because I'm not willing to do, to put things on my website that I don't believe in personally. Now though, it's like, I don't even, it's not even about, that's not even the game anymore. The game is I have to believe in the place I'm sending them, which is like in the, in the e-commerce space. I do love Amazon. Like I buy from Amazon. Do I think they're a, do I think they're a questionable organization doing questionable things with employees and pollution and things like that. Yeah. But I'm, I'm not alone in that sentence. I'm not alone in that statement. Um, 
doesn't mean I don't buy toilet paper from them when I need it. You know, it doesn't mean like I didn't just get, uh, you know, a, a, a flour duster in the mail from them because I'm baking sourdough. Like, and the thing is, it's like the reason I go to them is because every time I step into a store, I'm like, do you have this? No, but we can order it for you. I'm like, Amazon will have it to me in two days. Why do I leave the house? And that was when, before all this. Yeah, but I was going to say, we we just moved to a new place. Welcome to my new yeah. office. And yes. very nice and bright. Thank you. We, we, we needed to order a few things and Amazon mm -hmm. uh, shipments are way behind. So we actually ordered right. stuff from, from Walmart. So, I mean, it's an interesting, yeah, it's an interesting, you know, world. It's that an interesting in. time. I, I think we like ethically, I have to really like vote with my dollars at this point because I, I kind of like, I think I was one of those people who swept Amazon's practices under the rug in my, in my mind. I was like, oh, yeah, like I read the everything store. I was not happy after reading that. Um, just business eth ethics. And then I wasn't happy with like all the employee treatment. And I'm like, but man, two day shipping, who boy, you know, like so easy. And now I'm kind of like, okay, Matt, now, now's the time you need to like question that and rethink that. And you probably should have done it years ago. Uh, and so here we are as an affiliate marketer, this has pushed me in that direction. And I am like, good. It's a good thing. I'm, I'm being pushed in that direction. And I believe this whole thing is, oh, man, I have to believe this whole thing is pushing me in a good direction. I can't, otherwise I'll go insane. I, I can't, I, I, you know, that first day, yes, I drank myself to sleep. And I don't, you know, when I say that I'm not an alcoholic where I was like pouring, you know, handles of vodka down my throat. It's like, it's, it's, I like, I enjoy beer. So I just enjoyed it a little bit. I imbibed a bit. Um, because I was like, oh, fuck this day. I'm, I'm done. Like I'm done today. Like I got screwed. I need to like regroup and rethink. But I've always wanted to diversify my income away from affiliate marketing. And I don't mean removing affiliate marketing from my strategy. Again, like I said earlier, just shifting the, 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 the pie chart to more things that are more in my control. Like, you know, cause even I could say the same thing about, um, search engine traffic, you know, <sighs> again, this is that whole thing I said, I said it in the article, I said it before. It's like, you are not a part of these board meetings. And if you're relying on these big companies to like send you traffic and send you revenue and they, may, and they have a board meeting that you're not a part of and, and it changes your whole, it's like, you need to have more control over that. And that's why I think email marketing is so special and important because you have control for the most part over that email list. Um, you, digital product sales and just product sales in general of your own thing that you create you have more control over that. Um, even advertising, you have some control, but advertising, I can tell you, and I'm not talking about the, the uh, is that a Zoic? Is that how you say that? Yep, easy. They, and also they, they're a sponsor of mine uh, occasionally. So yeah, what, what were you gonna say about Ezoic? The you fine people at Ezoic? Ezoic. Yeah. No, I'm just saying that <laughs> like, even with like those, oh, yeah. you have less control, but I'm thinking of, of when I did Swim University ads, uh, we were direct sales. So like I would be like, do you want a banner ad in our next email? Give me, you know, a couple thousand bucks or whatever. Right. Same with podcast ads. Um, a little more control, but working with, I mean, that's why these companies are so popular because working with advertisers directly, you're working with another marketer who wants to basically own the message. And you're like, but I have journalistic integrity and, <laughs> you know, right. like I want to say what I want to say. And they're like, yeah, but you have to say it our way. And you're like, God damn it. Uh, yeah. So it's just a rough, it's a rough go. Yeah. It's, it's a, unless you're into it. Cause people are into it. I happen to not be one of those people, but, um, that's why it's like, I want to control my own products and that's part of the plan that I'm moving forward with. Yes. And you are, you know, a podcaster through and through perfect transition to digital products <laughs> and you have a course and you know it makes it makes some good money and i know courses uh are margin wise and and effort wise and the control that you were just talking about absolutely amazing yeah. 
Um, yes. I, I love courses and you're into them as well. So you, you have an existing course, you're going to beef it up. You're going to do upsells, uh, knuckle down on the marketing in general. So what do you yeah. have in place? How, how do you feel about that? Cause when I, when I read it, I'll be honest with you, this is, you know, you yeah. can fire back at me, of course, but you talked about quote micro upsells, which are, are great. Upsells are good, but are you like, Hey, I'm going to add some more courses. Do you have, do you know what the market wants as well? Yeah. 15 years. I hope I do. <laughs> um, we, we, all right. So some university has had this, like we, trying to figure out the Swim university audience is like both easy and incredibly difficult. One, we're dealing with a lot of people who are in their, who, who are older. We're talking about like your grandparents own in, in ground pools and your grandkids are swimming in them. Believe it or not, a lot, we have a lot, I get a lot of widows email us. Husband dies, they need to take care of their pool and they're kind of lost and they find some university. So from that anecdotal evidence being, literally, I literally I was in the pool industry like talking to these people. I mean, and I always say this, like imagine a 13 year old boy telling an adult how to do something, like how to take care of their pool. Like they're yeah. coming to a, a kid. Yeah, and it, you're, a, you're the 13 year old boy? I'm the 13 year old boy in this scenario because it really <laughs> happened and it's like that kind of power is ridiculous, right? Sure. And, and regardless, it's just a funny anecdote. But it, this is like, our audience is older people. They're not really that, I mean like majority are internet savvy, but some are not. Um, and so like we get a lot of people who email us and go, when am I getting my book? I'm like, we're not getting a book. It's you got it. It's like, Oh, it's did you ever enter your address in? How do we, how would we know where to send it? It's just like things like that. And yeah. we get, we get it all the time. We, and I can't, I can't even put enough messaging in, in our sales cycle to stop it. It just happens. Um, we had a book. That came out when I read, uh, if anyone's familiar with when, well, Nathan Barry, who runs ConvertKit, mm -hmm. had a book that came out called Authority. And I read that book because I was like, I'm going to create a product for some university many years ago. I created that product. It was a, called the Hot Tub Handbook, which is still for sale today. Um, and I put it up for, he was like, you got to charge a lot of money for your book. Charge money for your book. I'm like, cool. And to me, $49 was a lot of money. And no one bought that shit at all. They were like, I don't want it until I got it down to 29 and then sales just picked up and it wasn't a traffic change. It was because I, and I, this is a, this is anecdotal, but I believe that my audience was like a book cost 24 to $29 because I've been to Barnes and Noble and I've looked at the UPC code on the back of a book and seen us Canada, you know, those prices. And until I, hit that moment. And this is for any product, but like until you hit that price point for your audience, like it just kicks. So later I was like, okay, I can't charge more money for an ebook. I could call it a digital guy, which I tried to do. doesn't change the fact that it's a book in their minds. And so I was like, I need to add to this product in order to charge more for it. And so this is when I added the video course, to it as an upsell and then later combine them into one product. So the video course and ebook are now $49. Why 49 and not a hundred? You, I, I, I have not tried this, but charging a lot of money to teach people how to clean is a tough sell. So it's not like I'm teaching them how to make money. I'm not teaching them how to lose weight. I'm not teaching them how to have better sex. I'm teaching them how to clean a pool. It is just the most unsexy. <laughs> it's like it's like how much would you pay for uh, you know, the art of tidying it up or whatever, um, you know, Marie Kondo's book. How much would you pay for a course by Marie Kondo? Like probably not thousands of dollars, I would imagine. Maybe her consulting service, that's different. But I just think it's tough. So... The idea here is that I created the pool care handbook and video course. It's literally an entire course on 
pool maintenance, which is what my entire website's about, but it's video and it's like stuff that you're not going to get on the website. And so I'm like, well, what is there's, is there anything bigger than that? Is there a, is there a higher tier? And I think as soon as I started thinking about that, it's like, yeah, but that's going to require a lot of work. And so I don't have that kind of time right now with, with Amazon giving, giving me only seven days to fix this revenue issue. What can I do instead? Um, and so that was like, okay, my goal is to earn more per customer. I just need to increase the amount I earn per customer. An easy way to do that, increase the price, right? But then I may lose customers. So I was like, let me just add a little small product, 20 bucks, that to, to a sale. So it's like, hey, some people will buy it, some people won't, but I won't lose those original sales I had, and I may gain some extra income from those new sales I have. And obviously I have an entire back catalog of customers who've bought my product over the last four years that I can just say, hey, we have a new product. Great. So I might get an influx of cash flow in the beginning. And then we're going to create one for the hot tub side. And then it's like, then it's becoming a niche thing where it's like, okay, we just, we have this main product that kind of works for everybody. But what about people who have saltwater pools? Do they, they need something, they need special treatment. Um, people with Bakwa sill pools need special treatment. People with Intex pools need special treatment. And it's kind of like niching down without ruining the base. It's kind of the whole plan there. I like it. Um, and hopefully earning more per, you know, more, what, I don't know what they call it. Like revenue per customer. Is that, there's like, there's a good acronym, right? That sounds good. Yeah. Yeah. RPC. Yeah. So, um, so that's kind of the idea there to kind of rectify this problem. And we're all and like literally the day after this all happened, when I came to my senses, we started working on that product. So we're, we're actively coming out with it before pool season officially starts, which is Memorial Day is that. So we we hopefully will get it done before that, but, um, and it's really easy to do. It's just like a, you know, it's gonna be a $20 um, guide that is kind of an add-on. We're not gonna, we're not gonna muddy up our marketing at all because our marketing works, you know? So we don't wanna go, hey, we'll advertise this to some people and not, you know, and it's like, well, what if they only buy that and then they don't buy the big course? Let's just upsell the people who want the big course. Sure, that makes sense. Yeah, hopefully we'll see what happens. I mean, again, um, not again. First time I said it on, yeah. this, on this live stream, everything's an experiment. So if it doesn't work, we'll, we'll pivot. If it does work, then I'll, I'll be thanked. <laughs> You know. And I think uh, that that's key. I mean, when I have launched courses and other products, mm -hmm. you launch it and then you're maybe 25% done because then you have to figure out how to market it if you need to adjust. Oh, yeah. If you oh, pick yeah. the wrong market, you know, like you said, you could sell ebooks for a lot, but if your market thinks ebooks are like regular books and they're, they have a anchor point from yeah. Barnes and Noble, then you got to adjust and you have yeah. a pretty good idea of that, the price range that they're comfortable with. And Hey, if they just spent whatever, 29 bucks, another $20, that's pretty good. And you're, you know, yeah. what is that? Like a 80% increase in uh, yeah, I mean, we're looking at, I mean, Yeah. We did a hundred close to a hundred thousand dollars in product sales last year. So, you know, I'm okay. I can, you know, it's like, we're fine. Um, and, and perhaps we have to look at other, brands like swimming diversity may just get hit and just may get hit you know and even if we switch to something like walmart or or any of the other e-commerce stores like you know just get hit so what do we do more products better marketing more traffic and then try to find even other revenue streams outside of even that and so we're, we're going to transition a couple more points as well but you mentioned uh the uh, potentially an ebook on sex. And I would say I would make that a choose your own adventure if you're taking yeah. requests. Scratch and sniff. <laughs> Scratch and sniff. That's even worse, Matt. Oh, man. Do, do they make that, do that scent? Can you do that digitally? <laughs> It'll just spritz out from your monitor. It's mm -hmm. disgusting. Okay. Moving on to YouTube ad revenue. Um, you mentioned yeah. that you made like 11K, which is no slouch on the in the uh, YouTube yeah. world. You want to double it. 
And, Mm -hmm. you know, what's your strategy there? You and I had a a quick little um, off, um, I guess, off the record chat, which is now on the record, where I was like, hey, are you placing your ads manually? So, yeah, what's your strategy over on the YouTube side? Uh, So I've gotten a little bit of kickback on this strategy because they're like, you know, we're in quarantine, like, like all other YouTubers are suffering. I'm like, I don't, I'm not seeing that in my stats. Uh, we have a high CPM. I think it's because we have an affluent audience of pool owners, my guess. Um, so we're, we're currently sitting at about an eight to $9 CPM and that hasn't changed. So I'm not sure what's going on there, but you know, we don't, and that's not the only revenue stream. So that is like, yes, that's ads. That's like the whole, you know, AdSense partner, you know, YouTube monetization partnership where, you know, we're just literally clicking check boxes. Monetize this video. Yes. We don't curse on our videos. Our videos are very educational. They are high in search. So it's like, it just does well for us. And there's so many more, more like pool search terms that we could go after. Um, that we haven't yet. And so that's kind of like what we're doing. We're just literally producing videos every week, trying to do even more than that to just get search traffic from YouTube. And obviously we get traffic from embedding those YouTube videos on our website because our website gets a ton of traffic to be uh, for context in that. We're, we're roughly at about 500,000 visitors a month, unique visitors. Now that's more in, this, in the summertime than it is in the wintertime. So in the summer, in June, we're getting like 1.2 to 1.5 million. And in January, we get like 250,000. So averaging it out to 500. So with that, we're thinking, okay, well, you know, that's a lot of people watching videos that probably don't have YouTube Red uh, or YouTube uh, Premium now. And they're watching the ads and they're probably somewhat relevant because they're, you know, they're not getting Ty Lopez ads. They're getting like, you know, <laughs> home and garden ads probably. Yeah. Uh, so what I'm, so that's kind of the, the, the move there is just to kind of create more videos. It's like the only way, but on top of that, every single one of our videos in the description and in the video itself, we're promoting our products, giving out coupon codes and we're tracking that YouTube description have a 3% conversion rate on sales. What? That's cr- the, the description. That's so crazy because in the internet marketing world, I do a f- lot of videos, you know, and yeah. uh, it's pretty tough to get someone to uh, click off of YouTube because there's so many awesome other mm-hmm. videos popping up over there. Again, wow. different audience. Like yeah. my, I don't think my audience is our YouTube like consumers. Like I... When I'm when I when I want to relax for the day, I will get on my phone. I will go on YouTube and I will I will just lay in bed and just I'm gonna go YouTube for a while. It's just like I'm not gonna Netflix and chill. It's the same thing. I don't think my parents do that. You know, they they might find a video and they may like go down a little rabbit hole, but they're probably like on a website learning about pool care. They're like, oh cool, a video. Don't even give a shit that it's YouTube or not. You know, or they find a, or they Google something in my YouTube things. That's the other thing too, is like you create more videos, videos are appearing higher in the search results than posts. And it's my fucking face. It's just me going like, <laughs> buy, <laughs> clear pull algae. And it's like, click my face, buy my product. So I think just in general, like, you know, I, I just recently did two experiments. One experiment was I'm going to try to tackle Pinterest and see if Pinterest is a viable marketing strategy for some university which it which it does get it's the third highest traffic source for us does do well um it's kind of like i feel like it's maxed out a bit the second thing is i did a podcast and that failed horribly uh i did it so i learned um and it's like okay well where are we gonna out where are we gonna double down outside of like you know it's gonna be youtube what uh what happened with the podcast i mean you host one of the more popular podcasts. Yeah. i mean you're uh, you're an excellent podcaster so what what happened with the swim Microphone. yeah what happened um i don't think people care to listen to uh pool care audio i just don't think they care 
Okay, that's fair. I mean, there's another guy out there who's uh, got a huge, pretty big YouTube channel. I think he's like 60,000 subscribers. I think he's the biggest pool YouTuber. And he, every every other video he creates is a podcast. So he does it He does it video and then it becomes a podcast, an audio version. He's got ratings. I, I, I you know, I don't know. I, I haven't talked to him. I don't know who, like I don't know him personally. So I don't know if he is making any money from the audio side of things, but I'm sure he's doing well with YouTube. I mean, with 60,000 subscribers, that's not, for in that industry, it's not bad. Yeah. We're sitting at 30,000 subscribers, and we do pretty well. We did, like, yeah, you said 11,000. This month, we're going to do, like, 1,500 in ad sales. Like, okay, that's, that's, that's a revenue stream to me, for sure. So I'm like, video just seems like, it's always something I've always wanted to do, and now's the time to just kind of double down on it because it's just like, who knows? Yeah. That's certainly one of them. Um, Very yeah, good. So, so, yeah. All right. Just a quick reminder in the chat, we are logging the questions, so we're going to hit some of those um, in a few minutes. And, Matt, you, you have a tool out there, a new mm product or sort of a retooled product. And some people may not know anything about Lasso, but I mean, to tie it back to what we were talking about before is, um, you know, just the ability to put different affiliate offers on the same mm -hmm. page. And I'm going to prep you, Matt. Um, I'm going to have you share your screen if you're up for it. So okay. if you want to get ready, um, and while, while we're, while I'm, I'm buying time for Matt, I did hear, I, I know some people at Amazon and there was, like word on the street that Carol Baskin was maybe in the room when the decision mm. was made for the commission mm. rate change. Do you, did you watch Tiger King? Yeah. I, I, you know, I know that there's, there could have been a lot of threats from her, um, you know, like quiet laughing threats. I know she's very, uh, she, she hides it well. Um, you know, Hey, look, if you're going to feed some of the Amazon executives to tigers, I can see why they changed the commission rate. I, I, I would be scared too. <laughs> All right. I did watch Tucker King. Oh God, I hated that show. I hate that show. I hate that show. I hate that show. I almost I didn't I almost gave up because like five minutes in, I'm like, fuck these people and fuck this animal cruelty. I can't do it. And then people were like, Oh, you gotta give it more episodes. And I'm like, okay. And I did, because why not? Still hate it. It was an interesting show, but I don't know. Unsubstantiated claims. And Matt, tell us about Lasso. And you can share your Literally, screen and it should pass, yeah. pass over here. Okay. So this is, I mean, look, this is the thing I've been working on since, for, I mean, we've been, we've been working on this for like a year and a half, but more recently I, in December, I was like, can I redesign it? Can I like, can I, can I retool it from the ground up? Because not that there was anything wrong with it, but I'm like, I have a vision. I want to see something different. And Andrew's like my business partner who helped me, who, who basically helped me build it is like, yeah, let's, let's give it a shot. New logo, new interface, all that stuff. And we just quietly launched it on Monday and you know, it's, we just launched another uh, update today because we knew I knew I was coming on this. And if I mentioned it, it's like, we want to make sure that we're, you know, so I've been literally like just, that's all I've been doing. And like, it's so ironic that this whole Amazon thing came while I was in the middle of this. And I'm like, come on, I'm in the middle of this whole thing. And like, I, now I got to switch gears temporarily, but like my team picked up the slack, helped me out so I can continue to work on this and we can continue to get it out. And it's almost perfect timing. Cause it's like, we launched this thing. So I, uh, I have to remember how to share my screen with, uh, here we go. Oh, you know what? You told me to get ready. And I, I was like, yeah, it's fine. I know how to share my screen. That's cool. So I can't. I, I love, I love, um, you know, live video. It's always the best for technical issues. So, are you, you won't be able to share it very easily? Nope, because it'll have to, have to stop Skype. Because oh, really? I have to give permission to fucking Apple to share my screen. That's all right. That's all right. We could do. Great. I'm so glad I'm prepared. I'm so glad like I can't show anybody this awesome thing that I've been working on for six months of my life. Well, if I share my screen and just show the like the 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 front page, and we could yeah, we could that's fine. we could schedule another we could schedule another one, so we're we're good to go. Yeah. 
Um, and then that means Apple, why are you doing this? Like, why does Apple, why do they do that? It's, um, well, Matt, do you have any, uh, little monologue you could do while I get ready over here? Yes, I can do a little monologue. So again, like I was saying, like lasso has been this project I've been working on forever. Basically what it is, is it's an affiliate marketing plugin for WordPress that allows you to control your affiliate links like you would anything else like uh but it has a couple of other features including being able to add affiliate link displays you can monetize any link so if you have a link on your website that's like hey i, I linked to convert kit once i linked to bluehost once i linked to this product once but you didn't add in your affiliate link because maybe you weren't part of the program at the time or maybe you forgot in lasso you literally flip a toggle and it monetizes it for you on your site um you can also do it with keywords. So if like, I, I'm a huge fan of Podia, one of my favorite software is what I use to sell all my products. I talk about it constantly on money lab and I'm like, I I'm part of their affiliate program and I installed the new version of lasso on Monday. And I was like, I added Podia as a keyword. It went and found all the times I mentioned Podia on my website. And I just toggled them because every time I mentioned Podia, I want to send people to Podia and use my affiliate link. So, um, and then what it does is it, it shows you opportunities in like, it knows, um, hey, you know, you've been linking to this site, maybe you should link it with your affiliate link. And so it'll, it'll give you like a little icon that says like, you have new opportunities to link things with. So yeah, it's, and it's got broken link check detection. It's got out of stock with Amazon detection. It's, uh, yeah, it's kind of like, we're, we're trying to, we're trying to build, and I think we have, an all-in-one affiliate marketing plugin solution because I think there's a lot of plugins that do good things very well, but not there's not a single plugin that does them all and then does them all very well. And so that's what we're trying to do. And plus, we we have a couple of features in there like auto linking things, like being able to like switch affiliate links like on the fly without going into every single post and page. Very good. Kind of and a couple of the standout features, I would say are around number one, the slickness and the attention paid to design for the feature oh. boxes, because sometimes those come off a little sloppy in some other tools that I've used in the past. Yeah. And link alerts, huge. If you have a that's, big site. That's, so, that's a sleeper hit. Like we, I've, that's such a sleeper hit that we were like, yeah, let's, let's I'm mean, like, we, I always wanted it because why not? Mm -hmm. And now I'm like, and we actually had it in, uh, when I had, I had a plugin before this called Ernest, which is what this became. And I actually had, um, link alerts in there and then we built it into this new version and it's like, everyone's like, this is the best, like, this is awesome. Yes. And with the link, <laughs> it's so easy to build with the, um, yeah. And I, I looked at, uh, scripting it a little at one point in time and I was like, ah, oh, it's pretty mm -hmm. straightforward. You could just, I mean, it's fairly an easy programming problem to deal with. But um, mm -hmm. a couple of the other things are, I mean, you have click tracking, which, I mean, that's a thing that people could set up with a lot of tools for analytics, but you have the full affiliate dashboard. And when you're talking about diversifying to other affiliate programs, you yeah. really need to have clarity on what's going on. So if you realize, hey, um, this other program is crushing it, I need to, I need to know that. So. Yeah, and oh, you mean so like with with because we send all our click tracking data into Google Analytics, and so you can find out which pages on your site and which affiliate links on those pages are getting the most clicks. So, for example, uh, on one of my sites, we had this like top ten post of like ten brew kettles that we offered a brew cabin, and it turns out that like looking at the click tracking data that we sent in with Lasso, we found out people were clicking the fifth one the most. And so it was like, oh, well, let's let's move that to the first one. Gotcha. And that's what we did. Yep. Gotcha. And um, yeah, so yeah, and you mentioned the displays. That I mean, I mean, I appreciate that because that's my like, that's that's my department in the in the plugin besides like the sales page design and literally the entire interface design. But like, I'm in charge of like making displays look awesome on your website. And we're, we have two themes that we launched with. We're coming out with a whole bunch of more themes. You can customize your themes. I have a whole, like, I drew up this whole thing about CSS where I can give you, like, all these 
cool codes to design it any way you want to do it. We're coming out with comparison tables and attributes and a whole bunch of other features kind of in the display territory. But yeah, this is like, um, this is a long time coming. Like a lot of these features were like, and we all just like, we launched it and we lowered the price. Wow. And it's, it's so, well, I was going to say, you, and you added um, a 14 day free trial so people could check it out. And by the way, there's a link in the description, by, and I'm, I'm an affiliate, which it states. So if you do sign up and, you, and you're a paying customer, which I think, you know, if you check out the free trial and you dig it, if you have any issues, you know, feel free to, Matt, is it safe to say the customer service is excellent? I'm doing it. Okay. That's me. <laughs> All right. So if you can me and Andrew and yeah, so yeah, if, we're in it. If you catch Matt before he starts drinking beer, customer service is outstanding. <laughs> so, um, but there's there is a free, a free trial for 14 days that you could check mm-hmm. out. And uh, Matt, we'll have you back on for sure to talk Thank about um, and, and show the demo. You know, you could do a this little. Is, yeah, I mean, I I I am. This is like one of the things I'm like super super proud of because it's been so long and like we were just so anxious to get it out and it just like when this whole amazon thing went down we were like we were already planning on launching it and it's like i'm so glad that it like just the timing worked out for it but yeah i'm like i still like the design which is a weird thing i usually create designs and i'm like ah, i could do better but no i feel like i i did good which is not <laughs> something i ever tell myself i'm usually pretty critical but yeah um yes I need help promoting it. Um, That's pretty much what I'm going to be doing for the next couple of months. Um, Because it's again, this is a way to diversify as well, you know, away from away from like what happened. So Mm -hmm. very good. Like trying to help other people solve this problem the same way we're solving it. So awesome. And and I mean, my background's in software, so I know how tough it is to, you know, put it together. I, I never marketed software and that, that's even yeah. harder. I know, I mean, in this industry is tough. It moves fast. Especially um, plugins. Cause this is like, this doesn't, when you look at this in, in WordPress, it does not feel like a WordPress plugin. It feels like its own thing. And that was kind of the point. Um, WordPress plugins are, are, are hard. Most WordPress plugins don't have a, a free trial because how? we kind of solved all those problems and so like ours is like yeah we just everything is built by us we run everything it's our you can only buy it through us so yeah it's like uh yeah it was a long time and i'm proud it's out and oh yeah i wish i could show it i wish i could can you show your screen in the in at least the 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 sales page because that was all me too or no i think uh yeah yeah i can't hold on give me okay give me one second and we do let's hit um couple questions because i know um we had some from the very beginning so what this is from southpaw so thanks everyone for putting in the questions and feel free to hit us up with some more matt you good on time by the way yeah okay what what are you gonna do yeah how many i'm gonna have to call my wife to get more beer out of the keg she saw me walking by she's like you have to drink beer in the middle of the day you know like what the fuck man so um okay southpaw says what impacts does matt see with the Amazon changes um, to your SaaS product, Lasso, in general? Oh, I think it's a net positive. Yeah. I mean, we have Amazon integration. Works really well. Um, but I don't think a lot of, I mean, people use it, but I think a lot of people are going to be shifting away. And because of that, if you're adding uh, Amazon links manually or using a plugin that only does Amazon, you're going to have to switch to something like this so that in the future you can flip links whenever you want. And I think this is going to be a thing, you know, like affiliate programs are going to come and go and you're going to be able, you're going to need to be able to like shift inventory very quickly. And I think this plugin and this software is more important than ever. And that's not, I'm not even being a salesperson. That's just, I mean, like, I'm like, thank God I have this. And I thank God all of my links on some university are using lasso because I don't have to go into every single post and, and update it. I can just do it from one spot and, and A-B test. It's amazing. Yeah, and the thing is, um, even if people, because I, I still believe because of the market share that Amazon has, most likely for most people, Amazon is gonna be the, a bigger earner. Yeah. They have 38% sure. market share and Walmart is number two at about 5%. So yeah. 
it's seven X. Now you got a huge long tail out there to, to work with, but I mean, for most people, people side hustling, people getting started, which as -hmm. you know, Matt, most people haven't started yet. So there's a much (laughs) bigger market for beginners than there is for advanced people. Hence the reason we lowered the price because we thought we wanted to be for, uh, you know, high end affiliate marketers like ourselves. There's just not that many of us. So, uh, and, and, you know, the best time to start with Lasso, I mean, we have, um, like, we were able to do, like, imports, but right now it's, like, the best time to start is, like, you start a website, you start building links with Lasso, you're lock, you, you're, you know, all your links are locked in with Lasso, and so you can just switch and add, and, you know, that's the best time to do it is build your inventory early. Mm-hmm. But we even have the ability to, like, uh, it's, it's not, it wasn't out in this most recent push, but the next push that we do, it's going to be, you'll be able to import from other links, other uh, affiliate plugins in so that you can like just test it and then say, if you want to do it, cool, hit the button and all your links get imported over. Kick ass. Yeah. Next question from uh, Bob, that's R7 Eagle. Um, this one's sort of more about your content. So what's the average length of your articles if you just had to throw a number on it? 1900. Nice. So in that sweet spot that we always hear about. Um, yeah, not on per- not not because I read it, but because it depends. I I'll, I want to say this because if a, if an article about um, you know getting rid of pool foam takes five seconds to tell you about, then that's how many words it's going to take. We're not going to stretch it out. We want to, and here's the reason why is because Google is trying to give answers and they're trying to give short answers. And then we're also trying to give short answers. So, yeah. yeah. So, yeah, I give a similar example, by the way, where um, what's the boiling point of water in Boulder? It's whatever, 208 or something like that. Oh, yeah, something like that. Yeah. Nobody 205. wants to hear a paragraph about or, or a, like a thousand words about like the boy. Wow. My, when I was a young boy, you know, the boiling temperature was yep. only 212. That, that's all uh, recipe sites. <laughs> yes, exactly. I'm like, yeah. just give me the recipe, man. Just give me the recipe. Mm-hmm. All right. Uh, little kudos. Paul took two courses on Money Lab, says it's good content. Thank you. All right. What about ads? Oh, what's that? The ringing endorsement. Good <laughs> yeah. content. And that, that was um, the, the comment from you, Matt. So thanks for that. Next is, uh, I'm just kidding. <laughs> so the next one is, uh, do you have display ads on Swim You? No. <laughs> this, is, this is a point of contention between the two of us and Spencer and, uh, and, and even Jake and everybody who like sent me an email. And it's like, I got a lot of those emails like, and it's time to add display ads to your website. There, uh, I've thought of it. I mean, look, I've done this. I used to have display ads, not from a third party, but just kind of running my own uh, with my own plugin that I built, actually. Um, but the reason right now that I'm not running ads is because there's two. One, I am a speed demon. I care too much about page speed, and that's may- maybe hurting me financially, but could be helping me in the long term. And two, I'm a designer. So if you throw an ad on my site that sucks, I'm I don't want it I don't want people to see it. I think I want more control. Again, it could be a detriment to my bottom line, but it's kind of more of an integrity designer speed play. But not to say that I wouldn't try it as mm-hmm. an experiment on Money Lab to see if, you know, what would it what, what what it would do? Because again, everything's an experiment. I just have my principles, but that's the reason why. Gotcha. And I, I agree with the speed stuff and all the things that you said. I have a whole course on page speed. <laughs> like, like how you, can I? You can't put it in. Um, yeah, I mean. Yeah. And I guess, I mean, I, I would, I'd just be curious, would you consider just testing it for X amount of time and just see, Hey, all right, this is what happened. And yeah, but I would, we, yes, but I'm worried more about the long term effects of it for SEO. That's, that's my bigger concern is mm-hmm. yeah, I could throw ads on it, but it's like Google going to like D like, you know, penalize me a bit for having a slow site plus ads they're not making money on. Yep. Okay. 
and that that makes that makes some sense and i mean i personally don't enjoy ads when i go to a website sure. so right it, and, and again like how many people have ad blocker installed yeah and i mean we, we are also in a we're in a position of luxury right we could say yeah. you know what i don't I don't like the aesthetics of this and you know, it's not going to keep you from brewing beer every week, for example. No, but, but, but let me, let me uh, draw a comparison. I hate pop-ups for email. I'm, I've made that very clear. I have an entire website called moneylab.co slash email. You can read it. It's tongue in cheek, but the, I, I hate it. So as a user, if I hate it, why would I subject that to others? And I'm a person with ad blocker installed in their Chrome browser. So I, I feel hypocritical as a person. So it's more of like, I think it's an ethical thing. I understand that it makes more money, but it's the same thing. I get a lot of people who say to me, dude, start your own e-commerce website, buy these products from China, start sending, you know, drop ship, whatever. I'm like, I don't, that's not what I do not my business my business is media media company yep you're not gonna see wire cutter doing that anytime soon yep hey that's a good point because i i mean i've heard the drop shipping argument too which i mean totally yeah. valid but there's other overhead associated with it and yeah people uh, like you and i want to do youtube videos or podcasts and or, yeah. or blog and talk about what we're doing instead of like all right hey i'm gonna hire because yeah we could hire customer service, we could hire managers. Yeah, we could do yeah. that, but then, you know, we don't I, want to. I wanna, I wanna make digital products. I don't wanna make physical products. I don't know what the fuck I'm doing with digital, with, with physical products. That said, would it be a cool Money Lab experiment to make like one physical product? Yes, it'd be very cool. I may do it in the future, but it would never turn into my full business model. Yeah. It would be more of a like, are you gonna make a rap album every year? No, I did it once. I might do it again, but that's pretty much it. <laughs> Maybe a remix or like the, uh, what do they call it? Remastered in 2020. Remastered, yeah, the whole box set with <laughs> yeah. one album. I want the outtakes. Where, where's the demo cuts? You know, I want the there, deep cuts. In that album, there was no demo cuts. <laughs> well, it was all, <laughs> everything you heard was the demo. Next question, uh, unrelated to you, Matt. So I have a course. Someone's asking if it's opening up. It's opening next week. I am adding some new units to address the commission rate change, but a lot of people are waiting for it and it's going to be a little different. I'm always generous. I have a 60 day money back guarantee and I'm going to be even more generous because things are different. I mean, you can yeah. still make good money, but you're, people are not going to be able to make as much as we could in 2016 or 2019. Mm -hmm. So. Mm -hmm. So stand by coming out next week. Cool. And someone says, if I get Lasso now, how do I integrate with my website that already has hundreds of posts? Is it possible? So how does, some, how does someone start using Lasso on their site that already has a ton of links? Well, it, 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 it actually scans your entire website and collects all those links. Um, and when it does, you can take all those links and you can flip a toggle and you can turn it into a lasso link. Um, if it's Amazon, you literally flip a toggle and it turns it into an actual lasso link with that Amazon ID. So if you, even if you have Amazon products that are not monetized, like maybe you just threw an app, you flip a toggle and it, be, and it becomes part of lasso. So it actually doesn't matter. Um, it, so we control, so like we control, I don't want to say that we control. Uh, it's all on your it's all on your server. But basically, um, if you have a brand new if you have a site with hundreds of posts, we uh, create an inventory of all of your affiliate links that you can basically either flip a toggle and turn it into an affiliate link or not an affiliate link. Um, and you can even see there's a there's like there's a three reports. So there's domain reports. So you can see this is the best. This is my favorite feature personally, but basically there's a domain report that says, hey, you've linked to this website 18 times. They have an what if they have an affiliate program? You go sign up for their affiliate program, you get you, you create the lasso link, and then you go to that domain and you just toggle it over to that thing. And you're done. Um, there's a content report so you can see all of your links, both internal, external, and lasso links by your content. So 
you can see a post, you can click into that post, and you can see, oh, here are all the links on that page. And if you want to toggle an external link over into a, an affiliate link, you can do that. Um, and then it has every, it has a, a, a total unmonetized link report. So every single link on your website that has not been monetized, you can flip a toggle and monetize it. Okay. So yeah, posts doesn't matter. You already have affiliate links. Um, in about, hmm, I want to say next week, um, if you, let's say you have like a, a plug in like pretty links and that's what you're using to manage all your affiliate links, you'll be able to do two things. One, you'll be able to either toggle over one link at a time to just test out Lasso, make sure it's cool. You can revert those links and put it back into pretty links, or you could do a big bulk. I want to import all my links from pretty links over into Lasso and then delete pretty links and then use Lasso instead. Perfect. This is, uh, it sounds like it's easy to start using. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. It's like instant. Cool. And is it good for one site or all your sites? So that's uh, uh, licensing. So it's, so it's $19 per website and you can control all of that in your um, dashboard. So if you want to install on a new site, you have to activate it on the light on the, like on your account page and it's an additional $19 a month or $190 a year, which is two months free. Cool. So we make sure that like, we don't want to like you, we don't want you to install it on another site. And then all of a sudden your bills like, Whoa, I forgot. I didn't see how many sites. So we kind of like built in a fail safe to like, no, you have to the first site. Yeah. Because you're signing up for it. Then every other site after that, you have to like agree that you want that site to be, um, that you want to pay for that site extra. So it's $19 a month per site. Cool. And very, very approachable. Cause I know initially the pricing was more premium, but I, I'm glad yeah. to see it's a lower rate. So people can hop on and start using it, we, testing it out. Yeah. And the trial too was important because we want people to use it and we want them to see that like toggling. Cause that toggling is, even for me, like, I've, like I've been building it for so long, and then like I added it to some university, and I'm just like, oh. you know, like the the amount of times that I've like used the word algicide and like did not link that word, and it's just like I can just toggle, and all of a sudden I've like added like way more affiliate links to my website that can, people can click. That's just yeah, and just yeah, it was just like it was a, it's a big moment for me. <laughs> sure. like the person who actually built it, but who also <laughs> runs. The affiliate site, it was like, oh, shit, this is dope. It's pretty nice. Yeah, it's nice. Robert Cole asks, um, I have two sites in outdoor and sports area, and the start the sites mm -hmm. are starting to click. Are you saying Lasso will change my manual links to Walmart, Target, Home Depot? Yeah. If you want. I mean, yeah, if you want them to. Okay. I mean, you have control. So, like, you, it won't automatically do it the way, like, it's not like a JavaScript file. There's no JavaScript. So um, it, it, it won't automatically just like turn all your links. You have to literally like agree that, that you want that link turned into it, which because the reason we built that is because like integrity uh, affiliate marketers were like, yeah, I have way too many links to this one product on this one page. Like I don't want that many. I want to pick and choose. And what's cool is like, so it, like in Lasso you see a link, right? And you're like, well, where does, you know, it, you can see where it appears, but then you can click a button. You can see the entire paragraph in which it appears in. So you can see the context around that uh, link before you click a toggle Smart. or monetize it. Um, so same thing for keywords. If you monetize, like I monetize the Podia keyword and it's like, well, I don't want my H2 tags to be monetized. Like, that's silly. So I can look and see if it's an H2 or if it's like, somewhere in a good paragraph and I haven't linked to it like 17 times in that one post. And I'm like, cool toggle. It's linked. I never had to go into that post to create that link manually. Got it. Very cool. And as far as the, like the feature boxes, if you have like multiple buttons, you'd have yeah. to place those manually, right? Uh, so each, each link you can create a primary target URL, which is your main affiliate link. And then you can create a secondary URL with its own text. So you can create your primary URL with its own button text, and you can create a secondary URL with its own button text. So the reason we built it this way is because 
if you have like a display for Podia as an example, and maybe I'm maybe this is like not relatable, but the first button is like sign up for a free trial. The second button is read our review. So you can so the button the second button can go to like an internal link, it can go to another website, it can go wherever you want it to go. Very good. And quick note, since we're, there's a ton of questions coming in and I was going to tell Thais, you're doing awesome out there. I scheduled a certain amount of time. Right. If you got a jet, Thais, that is cool. If you could stick yep. around, that's great. Thank you for helping out. Everyone give a shout out in the chat to uh, Thais for making it go yeah, smooth. I know, I know managing <laughs> chats is very difficult. Oh my gosh. Yeah. I, it, I could barely get Skype to pull up and have us both live streaming. This is amazing by the way, right. but yeah, to manage the chat, I would have been yeah. just falling down and drinking beer. I mean, come on. come on. Next question from feed is asking about, uh, animated videos. Do you hire a designer? How, what software do you use? What do you do for the videos? I, I make them. Oh, which, oh, which animated videos I'm assuming the ones from swim university, perhaps the ones from, our former lasso page, I will tell you both. Um, the ones for Swim University, we use um, ScreenFlow, actually. Mm -hmm. If you're familiar with like screencasting, you can actually animate PNGs and in, in, uh, different uh, graphic files. So we create all the graphic files, we build the scene, and then we animate, then we reanimate the scene um, with, a, with a, um, a voiceover. So that's how we're doing it for Swim University. And for like anything else that I do for like my intros and stuff, I use After Effects. So I can do like just different, like more complex things that you can't do in ScreenFlow. ScreenFlow, you can really just take elements and move them into place um, and, and text and all that stuff. And for like more complex, like true animation, I use uh, After Effects. Cool. And I, I use ScreenFlow myself. My friend Alex yeah. Cooper from WP Eagle in the chat loves ScreenFlow too. Yeah, it's from Max, oh, and it's just yeah. it's it's awesome. So I use it today. Made a made a whole video today. Jamie Penny says, "How many page views should you have for most affiliate programs?" That's a tough question because I know one thing for the previous Amazon post, you know, a pre commission uh, slash. Um, I remember income school, they were saying about 30,000 page views will equal about a thousand dollars per month. That has probably changed, but that was the only thing I remembered is like a rule of thumb kind of thing. Sure. And so, um, and that is, that has been true across, uh, three of my websites. I don't know if that changes or not, but I'm sure, sure it will. It'll be more like seven or 800 bucks. Per 30,000 page views. Yep. I don't know if that's helpful or not, but. Yeah, and I would say my observations are pretty close to the same. I usually scale it down because it takes people to get a little longer to, to 30,000 page views. So typically right. I, I would describe it roughly the same, but just lower dollar amounts, but okay. the same equation. And it, yep. by the way, that is the most generalized because different that's price points, not... all that yeah. stuff. Yeah. So, and Jamie, uh, I would say, once you have enough content on your site, say 10 to 20 posts, go ahead and apply. There's no harm in applying. And no, I mean, I do. I mean, go for it. Uh, Money Lab only gets like 3,000 visitors a month, and it probably makes close to a thousand bucks in affiliate revenue. Well, we're sending a bunch more people there, buddy. So it's going to be Hopefully. going up. <laughs> you got to split it with me. <laughs> no, it's so. like the hardest site to market. There's no SEO. It's just, all word of mouth. John Moore asks, can you use different mm -hmm. affiliate IDs with Lasso and you have a, a different tag for each post is what John says. Uh, depending on what you're referring to, if you're, if you're referring to Amazon, you would use the same tracking ID for all of Lasso, but then you would send click tracking data into Google Analytics so that you could break it down by page. Very good. But if you but if you had but if you were using other affiliate programs, you can add whatever URL you want. It doesn't. It's not just Amazon. You can add literally any affiliate URL with any tracking ID to any link. Cool. But uh, each page would be the same link, so that way, if you had like a single affiliate link across 
200 pages on your website, you could update it in one place and it would update across 200 pages. Got it. So, and for the full context for people that don't know what or why John is asking. So John, I believe was trying to track his revenue per page by using tracking IDs, which is a very difficult way to actually implement. Let's say you have 600 pages. Well, that's not a viable option, but if you use Google Analytics, then you have uh, analytics, you have analytics for exactly what you're looking for. And so, if you use something like um, Impact Radius and you can add sub IDs into into uh, links, then you can use something like the Affluent Dashboard, which I know is pretty expensive, but you can use it to track really detailed shit. Eventually, something that we're working on, but it's for now that that's like that's kind of the solution. Um, but yeah, that's like really that's really technical high end shit. But it, you can do it that way for sure. Yeah, with Last. And, yeah, and that's cool. what Andrew does. Specifically. Okay, very good. And I, I was going to say, I mean, people want to have more data, but I never track to that granularity. And the value in which you get from that yeah. level of data is tough to really capitalize on. Yeah, I mean, Andrew's done it. I mean, again, like this is like this is like stage one of Lasso. It gets it gets much bigger than this in the future. But um, yeah, it's it's like kind of like get, getting into that more granular data detail stuff. Um, which he's, I mean, he's, he come, he's a big data expert where he comes from is his background. So, um, that's kind of where we're headed. But for now, uh, Google analytics is like giving us the best tracking that we've seen so far. Um, which is, which is awesome. But then, yeah, you can use something like affluent and which is a dashboard for uh, sub ID tracking with, um, s- specific affiliate programs. Amazon is not one of them. Amazon's really one of the hardest ones. And now they got rid of the content insights really difficult because you could have done it with content insights with some spreadsheet crossover stuff which we have done in the past um you can even use something like uh google data studio to start connecting those data points between google analytics data you get from lasso and other um you know apis that you want to connect to which i have videos on as well not that granular but pretty pretty awesome cool next question from matt playl Launch a new site quickly that is ugly with missing content and not that great writing or take six months and launch something good. What do you think, Matt? I would say everything but the ugly part. There's so many themes out there, one of them being mine, uh, where you can launch a very clean, very fast, very neatly designed, very professional looking website very, very quickly. And I would say spend almost... 5% 5% of your time putting the technical stuff together and 95% of the time writing, writing, just writing and videos if you can, but writing yes. words. And I, I generally agree. I mean, there's, I mean, let's say you do launch the site in one month. Well, what do you do with the other five months? I mean, what do you, what do you do in there? Keep, so keep writing, keep making, yeah. you gotta yeah. keep going forever, 15 years and nonstop <laughs> every, every twice yeah. a week, four so, times, three times a week. And I would say, yeah, I would say launch quick and then iterate. So Matt yeah. launched Lasso pretty quick. And I know there were some other moving parts, but you had an idea, you do it, and then you you adapt from there. So Yeah, I mean, the original version of Lasso was called Earnest, and that was done in 40 days. You can read about it on Money Lab. And then it was like iterate, test, talk to your customers, beat it up, find out, learn new things, change have a million conversations about pricing and <laughs> and then settle on something. Yeah. Well, and then the, the pricing thing is just, I mean, you, you pick a point, you launch it, you see what happens and then you adjust from there. I mean, it's all yeah. iteration because whatever your guess is, it is a hundred percent wrong. Like, yeah. Y- yep. So I, it's, everything is an experiment. That's just like motto I live by with pretty much everything. Oh, and I see Matt actually asked a complete question. I just ignored it. Thais even put it in here for us. So um, you fix incrementally or take the six months to launch a complete site. Sites are never complete. So oh, no. l- launch in one month, iterate, 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 and constantly improve. That's the name of the yeah. game. Yep. Justin says, Matt, if you're starting out on a new site, at what point does it make sense to start with Lasso in terms of the amount of content? 
I mean, I think, I, like I said earlier, I think I, w this is like, we're building the thing that I wish I had when I started every one of my sites, but I didn't, I had to do everything manually with a spreadsheet and then you get like a crappy plugin and then you get another crappy plugin to do something you can't do. And then by the time you're done, you have like seven plugins that all do different things plus a spreadsheet. Um, I'd say if you can afford it and I, and I would say, and I would argue too, like part of the, like Lasso's main primary objective is to earn you more money by adding more affiliate links to your website that you're not going to do manually. And by creating display boxes that get people to actually kick, click on your affiliate links because you give them more information. That is the point of Lasso. So to make back 19 bucks a month should not be that difficult. In fact, it, it, that's the kind of like, we thought that for when we were charging $49 a month for it, we're like, this is the point of this. It's the, it's the, it's like paradox, right? Cause the point of it is to help you earn more, but at the same time it costs more. And you're like, well, what chicken before the egg kind of situation. Mm -hmm. I feel the same way about SEO tools where it's like, Oh, it's a hundred dollars a month for something like Ahrefs. And you're like, yeah, yeah, but that is what gets you there. That's what gets you to a professional level. So if you did it early and you, that was your, that was where you spent your money. Yeah. That's, that's kind of how I feel. About it. So yes, I say start and it's, and if you start earlier, you have less shit to import and fix and things. And I would say, you know, two, two answers. So Matt, I, I generally agree with a lot of what you said. Mm -hmm. I think, you know, once you have enough content, say 10 to 20 posts, like I mentioned before, yeah. Oh, yeah. And I would potentially, you know, if you wanted to wait, if your budget is limited, if you were just getting started, wait until you're getting, I would say, 15 to 20 visitors per day. Because at I, that point, I believe you're probably going to get some conversions and you will be able to pull that revenue in. Now, there's no harm if you have the budget to go ahead and put it in ahead of time. But if, if you're like, okay, I have... I only have 20 bucks a month that I could spend on this. I need to get some traffic in. So I, I know that, you know, the revenue will come in. So yeah. if, if, cause if people are on a budget, you know, so yeah, I, I know a lot sure. of them are out there. Yep. Cool. Good question, Justin. Okay. Bob, our seven Eagle says, if you have two affiliates, can Lasso search those two affiliates for the same product and both affiliates without you manually checking each affiliate for that one product. So, um, I'm not sure I follow. I uh, so can it so if you're searching for a product, can it find the same product in multiple affiliates? Not yet. Okay. Okay. So you would we have only, to find so it. We only, yeah, we only have an API with Amazon in this version that's out today. Cool. Our goal is to have many more APIs added to Lasso so that you can do that kind of thing. Okay. Excellent. And just shout out to everybody in the, in the crowd here. We were creeping up to like 140 people. We got 130 people like the Q and a, just a few more here. It looks like we're, we're ramping down. So chunky moose is asking for any advice for someone just starting out, launch their first site. Uh, chunky moose just enrolled in my course. So, you know, follow the cool. course number one. And I would say just take action. Don't, don't try to learn from too many people at once. Follow my course. Information then, diet. Yeah. One one thing. Follow one thing. All the way through. I say that. You know what? I say this thing about pool care. <laughs> you go in my where I grew up. There was a pool store every, you know, mile on our on our like main street. And so I used to say, well, yeah. If you go to that pool store and you get information from them, and you come to us, like your pool is going to be green constantly because you're getting two conflicting different pieces of information because they're based on like chemistry but different approaches. And so if you constantly go out there and try to learn, everyone thinks they're a fucking expert and they try to give you that thing. But the, the truth is, is that each one of those people are their own expert in their own little field. If you just follow their blueprint, you will get somewhere. And then at that point, you will create your own blueprint and then you will start a website and you'll become an expert and we'll all be friends. That's how this all works. That's the cycle of it. But I think if you try to soak in too much information and have all these different pieces you think you're doing a good thing but you're actually just clouding the entire process and then you end up doing nothing or whatever so yes i agree with that 100 percent has nothing to do with sales it's just like 
stick with one program, follow it through. And then you will eventually come up with your own, like, cause your audience is going to be different from Doug and I's. And it's like, you're going to have your own like thoughts. You're going to have your own like internal conflicts and you'll get somewhere with it. And, and the risk is, you know, it's like a jazz musician, right? Like the risk is you're going to um, potentially pull together ideas that don't work well together. But later on, yeah. like once, if you learn Amazon affiliate from me, for example, and then you learn mm -hmm. display ads from John Dykstra, for example, and then you, you pepper on some other stuff from other areas, email marketing from someone else, and then mm -hmm. you pull it together after you kind of are competent in each one, you know your way yeah. around. There's a good chance you're going to have a nice combination. If you pull all three at the same time, you're going to be confused and there's a strong chance you're going to do things in the wrong order, misguided, and you're going to think yeah, none of it works. So, And you also got to do it for 15 years. <laughs> yeah, yeah, 15 so it's years. A, it's a long-term strategy for sure. Next question, uh, Saha says, is it still worth it to create smaller Amazon review sites to make 100 to $500 per month? So I'll take that first and send it to you, Matt. No, you take it. Okay, I'm 100% biased and I try and be transparent with what I'm doing most of the time as much as I can, right? So I know sometimes I just talk and I don't give you all the, the disclaimers, but I sell a course. I talk about this stuff all the time. So I think, yeah, if your sites are, hey, I want to start an Amazon affiliate site as a side hustle, yeah, I think it's great. It's easy to monetize. People are comfortable with Amazon, all the stuff we said. If you're thinking, I'm going to quit my six-figure IT job and uh, do Amazon, well, that's going to not be a one-year plan anymore or a two-year plan. That's going to be like a five-year plan and it's going to be a lot more difficult. And in five years, things could be very different. So I don't think you can do replacement income if you're aiming for under a thousand bucks a month, uh, $2,000 a month. It's totally doable. Uh, totally yeah. doable. Still. So, and I, I, again, I'm biased. I'm deep entrenched into this ecosystem and I'm going to be Damn putting more feelers out and doing other things very soon. So, all right. I think um, that was all the ones that uh, Thais sent over. I think there may be a couple others. Are you, a couple more, Matt? Are you good? Good. Now. How much beer do you have left? I ran out. I have an entire, I have I have a kegerator with three taps. I have a beer fridge of aged beer, and then I have a beer fridge of canned beer. And that's not a joke. I have three fridges of beer. That's really you awesome. <laughs> yeah, I know. I was going to say we, we was in the morning so we we didn't drink so yeah no, once this is lifted I, I don't have any um kegged beers i actually canned a bunch of them and oh, yeah, delivered yeah. them um <laughs> and i have two beers going right now one's a ipa and one's a it's not i can't even call it a culture anymore because i just like bastardized it but um i'm kegging those tonight and then i will be Car carbonating them and canning them. So if you're interested, I would love to get your uh, feedback on some cans. If you don't mind me delivering cans to your place. Oh, I would love it. Yeah, 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 absolutely. Yeah, I would love to try the Kolsch. I know that's one of your faves, right? It's. I'm not using Kolsch yeast. I'm using a cream ale blend from what from uh, White Labs because okay. they were out of Kolsch yeast. Um, and I, it was uh, all, it's 100% no, it's not 100% Pilsner. It's 95% Pilsner, 5% Munich. And I did Cascade. And then I drank it and I was like, this is actually super clean, really good. Like when I tested it and I was like, I'm going to dry hop it with a little more Cascade. So I dry hopped it kind of yeah. as a, on a whim. So we'll see how it comes out. That but it was, good. it was clean. Yeah. It, was it sounds like a, uh, like a hoppy Blondale, something like that. Yeah. Probably closer to that. Yes, for sure. And yeah, I can't wait until we can uh, judge some beer together and no, I, I, uh, do some tastings, man. Here on this on this email address for more judging, and I'm like, well, I guess we're not judging any beers right now. But no. there was going to be a big, like the big conference yeah. or uh, competition was going to be here in Longmont, and like anyway, April, right? soon. Yeah, next are year. They postponing next year. or are they just not doing? It? I think they are like not doing the first round at all, and then there was going to be other judging later. But I don't. Yeah, I think things are all up in the air. So, okay. Choosy Consumer says, if we would purchase Lasso today and improvements show up later, will we be grandfathered at $19 per month? Yeah. Okay. So, so you get all the you get all the updates. 
Awesome. Yeah. Very good. David Goldstein says, would you take an e-com site that is no longer selling and convert to an affiliate site? DA is decent. There's hundreds of backlinks. It's in the salon equipment and beauty supplies industry. Hmm. I don't know. I mean, it sounds like you could you could pivot, right? I don't know. I don't know. That's a, actually that's a kind of out of my wheelhouse. It's like going from an e-commerce to like a content site. I would go for it. I think um, you know, make yeah, sure the backlinks so are are clean, um, and then yeah. you know, like we're saying before, everything's a test. You know, give it a shot. I know mm-hmm. taking an existing site with backlinks in a history is a fine way to you know shortcut, short circuit some of the process here. Yeah. All right, and I think we made it through. So Matt. You're an epic guest. I can't wait to have you back on. I can't wait until we could uh, drink some beers. You could join me in the yeah. home office here and um, yeah. we'll see how it goes. I got the kegerator, share some Good. of my stuff as well. So any parting words for folks out there? I mean, no. I mean, <laughs> we all know what's going on. Like, what can I say to make it any better? I can't. I can just say, um, you know, now's the time. If you were ever thinking about doing anything, maybe this is an opportunity. I would look at this if you're if you're in. Um, I mean, not, hopefully, if you're watching this, you're not in dire straits. And if you can, if you can, if you were thinking about doing something, just now, now, get into it. Yeah, now, it's like it's gonna get. It's like yeah, it's just like I've literally this. It's it's kind of how I'm keeping sanity is just by going like this okay when this is over i want to come out like a fucking slingshot you know just and and i'm just kind of like quietly working you know here in my office like just you know obviously i have a fix that i have to make because it's amazon thing but other than that like literally it's all of april has been it's been lasso just like designing and building and tweaking and testing and just like yeah it's just it's it's a it's a career. It's a straight up career. That's a lot of hours. I wouldn't trade it for literally anything else in the world. I never want to work for anybody ever again. This is a good life. This is a good life. Um, but it is, it, it has its ups and downs emotionally, but like physically you're good. Right. Yeah. Yeah. You still wrestle with shit. Cause it's a harder, it's a little harder mentally, but, um, yeah, I, I even say like, I still wouldn't, I mean, I'd much rather go through that than anything else. Right on. And I think I'm just going to layer on top. I think you're right. Start now. People that are crazy enough to start something right now, even if it's not the ideal thing. And by the way, it's never the ideal thing. you got to iterate (laughs) on it. It's not going to be perfect. You're not going to launch the perfect product. So if you start now, if you're stubborn enough, to do something mm-hmm. now, like Matt and I are retooling, we're pivoting, we're doing stuff. Mm-hmm. Once this lifts up, we're going to be in fantastic shape because of all the work that we're putting in. A lot of people are asking about last. So there's a link in the description. I'm an affiliate. So if you enjoy this, yeah, you can please. hook me up with the affiliate commission. Do check it out. 14 day tr- free trial. It's niche site project.com slash lasso and um, check out well, Matt, where can people find you? Got moneylab.co, listen, money matters. Go to moneylab.co. All right, sign up for this man's email list. He's hilarious and he is uh, one of the better writers, authentic. It sounds like Thank he you. is uh, drinking a beer and talking to you via email. Most of the time, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> right on. Thanks, everyone. Hit that like button. See you, Matt. Thank you. <laughs>